Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel, Colinati. Today I'm going to review Sisyphean, which is written and illustrated by Dempao Trishima and is translated into English by Daniel Huddleston. This is a bizarre, deeply weird, sometimes disgusting book about human biology um, and the extreme lengths to which bodies and biology can be modified for different places and environments and different needs. I'm not sure if there is a genre label for this type of science fiction. I would definitely say that this is hard science fiction, but instead of being centered around physics and engineering, it's centered around biology, genetics, and tinkering with those building blocks and the results that you get. It is also very far out there, very grand in scale sometimes, and incomprehensible in places. <laughs> so the first thing about this I will say is don't read this if you are sensitive to or upset by graphic descriptions of body and biological organic matter. If you don't want to read very intense, sometimes violent butchery scenes of blood and guts and viscera and bodily fluids and meat and muscle, this book is not for you. I would not call this an outright horror novel, but it definitely borrows horrific elements from that genre, and there's a lot of body horror in the story. I don't like those types of things. I don't necessarily want to read body horror at all. I was pretty disgusted by stomach churning descriptions in this book, but I still really enjoyed it and I still think very highly of what's been achieved in this book just because it's fascinating and well thought out and is packed with invented ideas and concepts that are really well expressed, I guess. So this isn't a novel. It is more like a collection of four novellas, four main parts that are very distinct. Um, the biology in them is, is distinct, the actual bodies, um, they have different main characters and sometimes different points of view. But they certainly exist in the same world and some of the characters reappear in other stories in very different iterations or incarnations. There are also these fragments in between each of the four parts which could tell another story at a very, a very grand scale epic level, but whether that's really connected to the events of the stories themselves, well, I'll let you figure that out for yourself. I'm not sure if I understand it. In the first story, a nameless worker is laboring tirelessly, endlessly to manufacture organs and bones, like a, a skeleton, for humans. It works for this grotesque, gigantic, weird, melting, monstrous thing that's called the president and is apparently a human being. The second story is, I think, set on a moon or a planetoid that's kind of been modified into a spaceship. It's headed somewhere to find a place to colonize, and there is a city on it, this society called Cavemville. And the main character, Hanashibe, is kind of rising through the ranks of society and learning more about how uh, kind of the cycle of life and rebirth actually works here. Uh, so basically, yes, every once in a while they have this periodic rain, catastrophic rain of organic creature things that fall on them. They cut into the bodies and retrieve useful objects and reborn people who may recover their memories. It's bizarre, and people's bodies in this story are constantly changing. Everybody has a different body that may change as they grow. If they are reborn, they'll have possibly a radically different body as well. And even though normal baseline human bodies are mentioned, it's very rare. And the infrastructure and technology in this, this world is also heavily biological. In the third story, civilization societies are built inside of like the gigantic shells of sea creatures which constantly drift through the mud sea. And here, life seems to be primarily crustaceous, 
like mollusks or insect-like. And human bodies are insect-like with segments, um, armor, and plates, and multiple legs. The main character of this story, uh, he hears through his elbows. It's very interesting. Um, and in this one, uh, the main character is kind of investigating the strange happenings and how they may all be related, as well as the um, disappearance of a mummified body of, of what's possibly a human ancestor. And then in the fourth and final part, this mainly follows a girl who wants to become a dustmancer who controls the nano dust of the vast sea which covers most of the world. This world seems to have been like a high technology society that used nanomaterial, but it went wrong, and now the whole world is just a sea of nano dust. That's very dangerous because it reacts to what people want, and it will start to change and build things in response to what people want. But dust mancers can kind of control that. This world also seems to have more elements of technology as we'd probably recognize it today, but also maybe virtual reality and simulations. Kind of a question I had in this one was, is any of this real? Is this maybe a virtual reality or a running simulation that's like a layer on top of actual reality? And can you ever escape that and see what the world really is? Or hop over to other worlds, other simulations, where people may come from. I think it's very easy to assume that these stories and worlds and the biology and environments within them are dystopias, that there's something wrong, monstrously wrong here and it needs to be fixed. And I think it's easy to assume that at first glance because it's shocking, it's repellent, disgusting, grotesque, it doesn't make sense, it doesn't seem normal or right, but I don't actually think any of this is dystopic. I don't think any of this is even necessarily a warning against scientific experimentation run out of control or anything. I don't think that's the point. I think the point here is evolution, constant change, endless, and if you extrapolate out this far, you're going to come up with something that has become unrecognizable as a human being, as an animal, as Earth, or whatever. I think it's interesting to note what Sisyphean actually means. If you don't know what the word means, you might assume that it means something like monstrous or very large scale. It seems to imply something huge, but that's not what it means. Sisyphean means something that's endless, unavailing, I think is the word used in the dictionary. It's a task that will never be completed. That sounds a lot like evolution to me. Evolution is Sisyphean in some way. It's something that you will never reach an end destination. It's constantly working, constantly progressing but there's never actually a point at which it's going to stop and that you've achieved something with evolution. It doesn't work like that. I'm not going to pretend that I understood this book because I did not. I think I could read it multiple times and maybe unpack more of the layers, understand more of the concepts, but I think it's a very hard book to be sure that you've completely understood everything, that you really get everything. I also think that despite how fun it is to try to put all the pieces together to make all the connections, it's a book that maybe is meant more to be immersed in, to be experienced rather than completely understood. Just let it wash over you at times rather than trying to figure everything out. At the end of this, the one thing that I was really left with, the question that, that seemed to be at the heart of this book, was what defines humanity? If we significantly define ourselves by our physiology, by our bodies, by the way that we look, then what remains when you subtract the body or when you change it so much that it's not recognizably normal human anymore? What 
makes all of these characters still feel human when they don't have human bodies, when they don't experience the world with the same senses as a normal human would. And I think the one thing that remains through all the stories with all the characters is curiosity, questioning the world, scientific inquiry. Humans strive to understand ourselves and our world, to understand everything and to control it and to change it. And that is also a constant in these stories. That is Sisyphean by Denpao Tereshima. This is such a bizarre book, but it is packed with incredible ideas. Just, I'm a bit in awe at the sheer amount of imagination and how the author even came up with some of these ideas. And I also think that the translation is masterful. I don't know how the translator managed to translate some of the words used in this book because there's also this use of language. The linguistics of these stories is also very interesting. There are many invented terms, but there are also slightly different spellings of words you think you recognize, but actually they, they have new connotations now. The way that it's done, the way that it was translated was just wonderful. It worked so well and so seamlessly. So this is one I highly recommend. If you think you can take the um, outlandish ideas, if you are okay with the more um, disgusting body horror elements, there is a lot of interesting stuff in this book. So if you have read Sisyphean and you want to talk about it, leave me a comment down below. Thank you very much for watching this review and I will talk to you again soon. And until then, bye.